Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you for watching this morning. Um, if you are watching and you can think of anybody who may not have access to this and who has Facebook and you want to send them a link, uh, please do so. And I uh, appreciate each and every one of you being available and and being live here today with us and being involved in this morning service. And we just want to say again, thank you for being faithful. We apologize and we're sorry that we all can't be in the church, but we understand. And um, we're not going to allow that to hinder us. We're still going to have a move of God this morning. We're still going to allow him to minister to us today. And we just, we're thankful and we uh, we bless God today. So before we do anything else and we get started here, there in your home or wherever you're watching us, I ask that you would just lift your hands this morning and let's have a moment of prayer and invite God <coughs> to come into our residence, to come into our, our places, wherever we have this, and ask that he would minister today. Jesus, we bless you this morning. We love you. We thank you for your goodness and for your mercy, God, for your faithfulness to us, God. You're so good, Lord, and you bless us and you take care of us, Lord. We love you today. We worship you today, Jesus. We invite you, God, to come into each and every home today, Lord, where this live feed is being streamed, God. We invite you into each residence, God, where this recording is being viewed later on, Jesus. God, you've orchestrated this today, and we ask that you would move, God, that you would minister to those who are in need today, that you would speak to your people, God, that you would bless today. We ask and pray these things in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Again, thank you for being here this morning. We have quite a few prayer requests. We're going to mention those and uh, ask that you pray there for each one of those. When we get through the end of the prayer request, if you have one that was not mentioned here this morning, feel free to put that into the comments. The church uh, is watching today, so they can read those comments, they can see your prayer request, and then they can also pray for those as appropriate. Amen. First of all, we'd like to pray for those who are sick and here as part of the church. Um, a list of those, first of all, is our pastor. He's very sick, so we ask that you would pray for him, not only for his body, that God would touch him, that would, God would heal him, God would help him to recover, but also that God would allow him to make the decisions that he needs to and the choices he needs to concerning the church and what is best for us and what God wants to happen for us. So pray for him. Also for Ralph and Nancy Teal, that God would touch them. Uh, brother and Sister Rodriguez, Sister Becky Zuniga, uh, prayer for Amanda and Mimi, Sister Carrie Wilson, and uh, Sister Amanda Flores. Those are all the ones that have commented and we know aren't feeling good. So we ask that you would take a minute and pray for them this morning. Jesus, you see, God, those here in the church, Lord, that are part of our body that are not doing well or that are recovering, God, we pray that you would minister to them, that you would touch them this morning, God, that you would heal them, Jesus, that you would allow them a speedy recovery, that you would bless them, God. Each one of those that we've mentioned, minister to them, we pray, God, in faith believing, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And some of the other prayer requests that were mentioned on our um, Facebook feeds, first of all, for brother and sister Ray. The last I heard, Brother Ray was in the hospital, so we need to ask God to move in him. Uh, for Larry and Desiree, Brother O'Brien's son and daughter-in-law, they're both suffering with COVID. Uh, ask that God would move in my brother, Nathan. He's had an infection in his foot, and the last I heard, he was still in the hospital. So ask that God would touch him. Sister uh, Tanya's grandma, Beatrice Rodriguez, I believe she fell and, and injured herself, so we ask that you would pray for her. And then Sister Tanya's brother, Sam Gonzalez, and his family dealing with COVID. And also her other relatives, uh, Rosalind Huerta and Tasha Perkins. So if we could take a minute, pray for those needs. Jesus, you see all of these that were mentioned right now, Jesus. God, in a time where it seems like there's so much turmoil going on, God, you are still the healer. You are still faithful. You are still on the throne, Lord. We ask and we pray this morning, God, that you would touch those needs, that you would move in them, that you would minister to them, and that you could receive the glory, God, that you could receive the honor. We could say, look what the Lord has done. And we thank you, Jesus. We bless you. In Jesus' name. 
Again, like I mentioned earlier, if you have other prayer requests, other needs, put those in the comments on the Facebook feed. And those that are watching, uh, when you see those come through, pray for those and ask that God would uh, move in those needs. Uh, two quick announcements. First of all, there's been some asking about how they can give while we're not having service. Um, during the day, the church door is open, so if you want to sneak in really quick and drop your offering in the offering box, Brother O'Brien will be monitoring that uh, this afternoon and probably daily throughout the week, so feel free to do it that way. And also remember that we do have an app, the GiveLify app. You're able to create an account and give online, and that will go to bless the church. So be th thankful, uh, excuse me, I'm thankful for your faithfulness. Uh, those that are wanting to give, who are reaching out, asking how they can give, continuing to bless, continuing to minister, and we thank you for that. And then also, uh, it should go without saying, but when we open the doors back up for service and we're back here together, please remember, if you're not feeling well, if you're feeling sick, stay home, take advantage of the online services. Um, we're not operating out of fear, but we are operating out of caution. We want to make sure that we want to keep everyone as safe as possible. We want to be able to keep the doors open. So, again, if you're not feeling well, you're, don't take any chances. Stay home, get better, and then come back, and we can all continue to worship together here in the house of the Lord. Amen. So, as you may have noticed, I'm sure all of you did notice already, we don't have uh, any music this morning, and that's because some of our music team is also under the weather. And so we're having a, a an adapted format. And so you get to see me and hear me, and that's about all this morning. But I pray that that's okay and that God will still move and uh, he'll still do a work anyways. Just a quick reminder, 6 o'clock tonight, uh, back here live on Facebook, Brother Anthony Zuniga will be ministering. So please, you know, set that aside, that time aside to log back on, have service together this evening, and, and God's going to do great things. Just for the next few minutes, though, I'd like to talk about something that I've had some notes on and, and something that I believe God placed on my heart. And I pray that as you listen, that you would get involved there on the comments. And I know it sounds weird, but when you, you comment in and, and it encourages each other to let, let each other know that you're paying attention, that you're behind what's being said, that you agree with it. And that it lets everybody know who else is watching with them and we can all have church together. But for my text tonight, it's going to be from the book of Matthew. And I say tonight, it's actually this morning, I apologize. Matthew 21, verse 13. It's a short scripture. <clears throat> and as Jesus talking, he says, And he said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And I want to focus on the first half of that. He says, my house shall be called the house of prayer. And just for the next couple of minutes, I'd like to talk about the house. Amen. We're going to talk about the house. So one more time, I ask there that you would just close your eyes and, and let's talk to the Lord one more time and ask him to move on me, to give me the words to speak but also to open each of our, our ears that we can hear and our minds that we can understand what it is he's trying to say to us today. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, again for this opportunity. God, it's different, it's strange, but we know that you're in it, God, that your hand is in it. And we pray this morning and ask, God, that you would minister, Lord, that your will would be done. I pray, God, that what you want to be said would be said, God, and I ask that you would open our minds, that we can hear and understand what you're trying to say to us, Lord. Allow us to accept your word today, God, and just minister to us, we pray, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen. When we talk about a house, we think about a long-term residence, a place where somebody lives, where somebody stays, and they're going to be there for an extended period of time. You think about short-term stays, you're going on vacation or you want to stay somewhere for a couple of days or for a week, that usually goes to some sort of vacation property or a hotel or a motel. But when you say somebody has a house, that's a long-term residence, an established place. You know that they're going to live there for an extended period of time where most people it's permanently. You think about physical houses, there's a lot of famous ones 
Uh, the first one that pops to mind is the White House. We know that that's the residence of the president. It's one that when you see a picture of it, anyone in the United States who's a resident uh, usually can just see a picture and automatically identify that that is the president's house. We know he lives there. That's where he's at. Uh, you think about on the San Sam Simeon uh, area, the central coast, you see Hearst Castle. And they say that that wasn't uh, Mr. Hearst's permanent residence. They said he had his permanent residence in New York, but he ended up spending most of his time there. You see that, and you identify that with his house. You see the big famous houses, and you know that, hey, so-and-so lives there. That's their place of residence. There's a house that we love over on Shirk Avenue. It's, it's an amazing-looking place, and every time we drive by it, Sister Kayla always talks about how she couldn't imagine having to clean all of that house. Way too big for what we can, what we can imagine us being in. But it's, it's, you see that and it's easily recognizable. It's easy identifiable that that house belongs to that person or is in that location. It's a permanent residence that we're all familiar with. Now, in the scriptures, there are mention of houses in the Bible. And we want to talk about a few of those today, starting with the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 24. It says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. And Jesus was ministering. He was talking and he's saying, here's an example of somebody who hears what I'm preaching, what I'm talking about. And does what I'm saying, this is what he looks like. And a person who hears what I'm saying and does not obey my words, here's what he looks like. Every single one of us has a house to build in the spiritual. As we live our everyday lives, we go throughout life, we make decisions, we make choices. While we do that, we are building our house. Every decision that we make drives another nail into a board. Every choice that we make puts another piece of sheetrock up on the wall. It's never ending. It's never finished. But everything we do daily consistently builds our house. And so the question we should ask ourselves when it comes to this is, are we building our house for the eternal or are we building our house for the temporal here today? Each one of us can make that decision for ourselves, and we know the answer to that question. But think about that. Every day you are continuing to build your house Scripture tells us that every choice that we make, we either do what the Word of God tells us, and we do, are like a wise man, or we ignore what the Word of God tells us, and we are like a foolish man. And if you know anything about building houses, and be honest with you, I don't know much, but I do know that the most important part of building a house is the foundation upon which it is built. And the Scripture talks about that. But if you ever go out to see a brand new community where there's a subdivision, they're starting to build homes, they take the ground, they flatten it out, but the first thing that they do when it comes to building a house is they lay the foundation. They pour that cement, they let it set up because it has to have a strong foundation upon which to build that home. And if you talk to those who are, who are carpenters and, and in the construction business, they will tell you the, the laws and the restrictions that are built based around that foundation and how stringent they are because they know that if that foundation is not sufficient, that house will not stand. And we know that the rock we should build our foundation on is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The church along with every believer should be built upon that rock. He is solid and he's unmovable. And that's what he's talking about in his parable. He's saying, when you hear what I'm saying and you do my words, you do what I tell you to do, you're building your house upon a rock. You're building your house upon a foundation that is not going to move, that is solid. Amen. 
And we know that building upon a rock requires care and pains. You can't just go out and say, here's a house, I'm going to set it on a rock. No, you've got to be able to tap into that rock. You've got to be able to drive down into it to secure the materials that you're attaching to it. You've got to take time and diligence. Amen. Luke 14, 28 says, For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest haply after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that be- behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. And if you're a wise builder, you know that before you ever begin to build, make sure that you're able to finish what it is you're wanting to do. And again, if you want to finish that house and you want that house to be strong, the first thing in your plan has to be the firm foundation. If you build upon anything else other than Jesus Christ, anything else other than that solid rock, you're building on sand and your house is destined to fall. When the time comes, that house that you've spent so much time on, so much effort on, you spent so much money on, it's all for nothing because the foundation that you're building upon was not, for, was not worth anything. There are those in this world who profess that They hope to go to heaven. They want to make it, but they despise the rock. They don't have that foundation. They say, I I love God, and I want to make it to heaven, and I believe, and I'm just a good person. But they haven't taken the time and the commitment to build their house upon the rock. They build upon a profession of religion. They say, oh, I'm a Christian, and I just want to be a good person and believe. They build upon the privileges they enjoy and the privileges they go through in life. And I have a reputation and and -and so-and-so knows me and people know me because I give a lot of money or I'm just a good person and I help everybody out. And they depend on that. But they're not doing what God has told them to do. They're not following the true plan of salvation that's been laid out in the Word of God. And when that happens, that house that they spend so much time on building Every day, choice by choice, decision by decision, one day is going to collapse and come down. Sometimes we may get discouraged. We see other people out in the community or other people in the world, and they look like they're doing so good. If we're talking about houses, we look back and it looks like they have a mansion built. They have everything they could ever want. And we say, God, I don't understand. I know that they're not living like they're supposed to. God, I don't understand. I know that they're not saved because they haven't been baptized. But, God, they have everything that they could want. They're blessed. God, why? But what we do not see is the foundation upon which their house has been built. When you drive by a housing community, you see all the beautiful homes. But you cannot see the foundation that lies underneath them. You have no idea what they have been built upon. And church, I would rather have a poor looking shack with a foundation that's going to last forever than a mansion that's built on sinking sand. And I say that and I don't believe, I'll put this in there, I don't believe God's given us poor shacks because when you're a child of God and you live for God, you will have the blessings of God upon your life. There's no reason that you should feel like you're poor and and down and and just worth nothing because when you are a child of God, amen, you have riches more than you will ever know. And the blessings of God are upon your life, amen. We know that we are in a storm right now. The world is in turmoil and chaos. Each one of us have a lot of craziness going on in our lives. And the wind is blowing The rain is falling. But the question is, what is your long-term residence founded upon? Because if your foundation is the Lord Jesus Christ, and you are dependent upon God, and you have faith and trust in God, no matter how hard the wind blows, we have a foundation that our house is going to stand upon. Amen. There is no storm that can destroy your house today. If you are built upon the rock, the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 1 says, For we know 
that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. Every one of us today has a promise of a house in glory. We have a home in heaven that God has not built with earthly hands. And if we will continue to build our house upon the solid rock here on earth, if we will continue to make a decision that's going to build a house upon the rock, that's going to build a house upon the solid foundation, amen, you're going to make it to the house that he has prepared for you in heaven. As we build our homes here on this earth, if we build them on the right foundation, when the time comes and our house is standing here, when we make it over to glory, we're going to have a home that was prepared by him that's never going to go away, that we can spend eternity in living with our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm grateful for that today, and I thank the Lord for that promise that we have today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The book of John, chapter 14, starting with verse number 1, the first line of this says, let not your heart be troubled. Amen. If your heart is troubled today, if you have despair, if you have worry, if you have fear, the first line of that scripture says, let not your heart be troubled. You've built your house upon a foundation. Is no storm going to tear that down. Don't be troubled today. Don't have fear in your life today. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Don't be afraid. Don't be troubled. Because God has prepared and is preparing a place for you. And our eternal goal is to make it and to live in that place with him forever and ever. Amen. Amen. When we think about the church, the apostolic church, those of us that are filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, we associate this church that we are a part of with the first church that was founded in the book of Acts. We preach the same message that they do. We try to live the same life that they do. We try to mirror and model ourselves after the church that was founded, like I said, in the book of Acts, the first church. And when we think about that, we start to look through the book of Acts and see how the church operated. We, one thing that we do not find is that when it was time for church, that they all went to the temple or the synagogue every Sunday morning and Sunday night and every Wednesday night had church together, went home, and that was the end of it. I'm going to read some scriptures, and we look at Acts chapter 2, verse 46. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Singleness of heart to me, when you read that, it's unity. Daily, going from house to house in unity. Acts chapter 5, verse 42. And daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. The church that we model ourselves after, daily in their homes, taught Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 8, verse number 3 says, As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women, committed them to prison. He knew where to find the church people. They were going to be in their house. Acts 10, 22, And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth God and of good report among all the nation of the Jews, was warned from God by a holy angel, to send for thee into his house and to hear the words of thee. He was going to preach to Cornelius in his house. Acts 12 and 12, when the, he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary and mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. They were praying, had a prayer meeting in her house. 
Amen. Not down at the church on a, on a Monday night, but they were having a prayer meeting there in the home. Acts 16.32, And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. They were preached to in the home. Acts 16 and 40, And they went out of the prison. It doesn't say they went to the church. It says they entered into the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them and departed. Went to Lydia's house because that's where the brothers were. They were in the house. Acts 18 and 7, And he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshiped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. And Acts 20 and 20, And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but I've showed you and taught you publicly from house to house. You are at home in your house today, but you have the exact same opportunity to be the church. Because we can't be here in this building together means absolutely nothing when it comes to each one of us being the church. When it comes to each one of us being a minister to those who have needs. We can still teach the gospel from our house. We can still bless each other from our homes. Now I understand you say, oh, I can't have anybody in my house right now. I got to be socially distant and all of that. And I, and I agree with that. But you have family there in your house who you can be together with. You have individuals who live under your roof who you can have a prayer meeting with. You have a cell phone that you can call somebody else in their house and be an encouragement today. You know somebody who can be hungry for God. You can pick up the phone and say, hey, I'm here at home. You're there at home. But let me minister to you today. Let me preach to you today. Let me tell you about Jesus this morning. Just because you can't be in church does not mean that you cannot be the church today. Amen. Be there in your house and minister to somebody and have church at home. Even though you're home, you can still share the Word of God. Even though you're home, you can still sing the praises of God. You can still talk about the goodness of God. You can still declare the mercies of God. Everything that comes out of your mouth, just like you would here in the church, you can do that same thing there in your home. You can lift your hands. You can worship God. You can jump. You can shout. You can do those things there in your house. You can still be the church in your home today. Have church in your house today just like they did in the book of Acts. We model ourselves after the Acts church, and it's time to model ourselves just like they did in house to house. And let's have church this morning. Let's be the church this morning. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. When I was a kid, feels like that was a long time ago every day. But when I was a kid, there was a very popular... Christian artist by the name of Carmen, and he had a song that says, who's in the house? And the answer was J.C., Jesus Christ. And you hear the kids go around singing that all the time. But I promise you that J.C. can be in your house today. If you're there, the scripture says we're two or three are gathered together. In his name, he's going to be there also. But if you make up your mind to have church in your house, if you determine to be the church there at home, Jesus Christ is in your house with you today. And going back to our text, Matthew 21, and he said, it said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer. He didn't say it's a house of praise or a house of worship or a house of preaching. And all of those things are necessary. We're not setting any of those aside. But he said his house is going to be called a house of prayer. And I believe more so than ever, there is a call to prayer in our houses today. There should not be a single one of us who have a home in which we do not pray. Every one of us should have a time and a place to commune with God and to talk with the Master. If you've been around church for any length of time, you know the story of Esther. And just by me mentioning her name, you probably know where I'm going to go with this. But Esther was an orphan, orphan child, and she was raised by her other 
or older co- cousin, excuse me. And he had the favor of God, and she had the favor of God on her life. And God placed her into the king's house, and she became the queen of the land. She went from an orphan Jewish girl to the queen of the land because of the favor of God. And I want to say this, that if you're a child of God, your house is built upon the right foundation. God knows exactly where you are today. And God knows exactly where to place you and when you need to be there. Sometimes we get frustrated because we feel like, well, I just, I feel like I'm, 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 I'm destined for more and there's other things I should be doing. God, why don't you open the door for me? God, I know you have something else for my life, but I, I can't get through to it. Just there's a wall there. Remember, not only the will of God as far as where you need to be is important. But the timing of God is just as important as well. If you know that God has more for you in your life and there's something else in store for you, don't get frustrated in your waiting. Take peace in the knowledge that God has a plan and that when His time comes about, He will set you into that plan. Until then, continue to build your house upon the rock. Serve God, live for God. And know what you need to do is right and do that. Amen. But God knew there was going to be a threat of death upon his people. He knew how those things were going to unfold. And he placed Esther into that king's house for that specific time. She was placed in the perfect situation so that when the need arose, she could do her part to meet that need in that time. In your home today, in your physical house, For such a time as this, just like Esther was there for that time. There is a need for prayer like ever before, and you are in a position at home to be able to meet that need. There is a reason you're in your house today and not here in the church building. Things unfold according to God's plan. And I pray that you do not allow that need to pass you by if you have the ability to meet that need today. Just like Esther, you have a position in the kingdom. She had a position in the kingdom there on earth, and you have a position in the kingdom of God. And God is depending on you to fulfill your purpose, that he has placed you into this house, into your house for such a time as this. Amen. Could it be that you and I have been relegated to our homes today for a work that cannot be done in the church? Think about that. Is there something today that you can do from home that you would not normally do here in the church? Is there a reason you're in your house today to minister in a way that you would not do here in the church building? It's no accident that events have unfolded like they have. Accidents don't happen in God's kingdom because He has everything planned out. And it's our responsibility today to respond to the purpose that God has in our lives. Be the book of Acts church today in your home. Pray in your home today. Minister to somebody from your home today. If you are in church today, and I wish we could be here worshiping together, don't get me wrong. But if you were sitting in church today, you would not have the freedom to pick up your phone and to call somebody that you know is hungry this morning. But there in your house, you're able to pick up your phone Call that person and say, you know, you were on my mind today, and I wanted to encourage you. You were on my mind today, and I want to tell you about Jesus. Things that you cannot do from the church house that you can do from home today. God's placed us in our homes for a season, for a period of time, so that we can have a purpose and we can be a minister. And as our live stream ends today, I'm just about done. I ask you, don't let church end in your home. The live stream is getting ready to close. It's getting ready to finish off. And some will say, okay, he's done talking, I'm done. Church is over. But for those that are taking this to heed today, I ask that as the live stream ends, you would take the time to pray. 
Commune with God this morning. Ask God what, it want, what He wants you to do, what He wants to do with you and through you. And for the next, however long it takes, for the next period of time, between you and God and your family that's there in your home, allow God to speak to you. And respond to his word. Remember what we read. God, Jesus was saying, those that hear my words and do them, that's a wise man that builds his house on the rock. So as we end and you hear the words of God, and you hear God speaking to your spirit, respond to that. As God places somebody on your heart this morning, reach out to them. You are in your home. For such a time as this, don't let this opportunity pass. Don't let this time go by because God has a purpose and a plan. Be the church today from home. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.